Coming up on Canyons News, we take a look into the destructive path of wildfires this season. Then we see the community come together in support of a local coach fighting a deadly disease. And finally, a look into how community colleges are tightening up security measures to combat financial fraud. Canyons News starts now. Live from Mentory Hall on the campus of College of the Canyons. Came together to shed light on a deadly epidemic. With news from across the Santa Clarita Valley. And senseless tragedy. Reporting live for Canyons News. I'm 10 camera 5. This is Canyons News. Hello everyone and welcome to Canyons News. I'm Meg Hall and here's the latest from the Canyons Newsroom. Financial aid fraud is hitting community colleges hard with scammers targeting online classes in vulnerable institutions. Millions of dollars are being lost to these bad actors. Christian Sukic provides us with the solutions COC has put in place against such cases. Community colleges can often provide a cheap and flexible option when it comes to a student's education. However, institutions are being met with an expensive problem. Financial aid, how can I help? These schools are feeling the pains of financial aid fraud, where scammers submit fraudulent applications under stolen identities. The attempts that we're seeing are students that are submitting uh, fraudulent stolen identities, uh, fraudulent information on the FAFSA, and they're attempting to enroll in classes to receive uh, federal grant funds uh, and then drop classes. These scammers are called Pell Runners as they collect Pell grants from the federal government and then run off with the money. The California Community College's Chancellor's Office has reported a total of $5 million given to these scammers alone. These fraudsters particularly target online courses where it's harder to tell if you're a real human being or not and these classes suspiciously fail to capacity. But by the time the course begins, all of these scammers vanish, and what's left behind are very few well-intentioned students. This is a costly problem, but the solution? We require uh, suspected fraudulent applicants to come to campus in person and submit a photo identification so that we can verify their identity and allow them to move forward through the application process. According to COC Financial Aid, the amount of fraudulent applications that come through measure at around 2 to 3 percent. While a small number, the impact is significant enough to require immediate action. For Canyons News, I'm Christian Sukic. The COC Board of Trustees are meeting tonight to discuss the future of student housing on campus. The board says the housing was meant to address the needs of low-income and full-time students. The college was awarded a nearly $62 million grant, but says the state changed the funding. The proposed funding would now require the district to cover the project's cost. The college says while it recognizes the critical need for student housing, it wants to make sure it maintains the district's financial stability. Two months ago, and for the first time in 36 years, COC saw a change at the top. The college said goodbye to longtime chancellor Dr. Diane Van Hook. With the change comes a new but familiar face. Canyons News reporter Andrew Fabella is outside of Canyons Hall to tell us more. Thank you, Meg. In July, the COC Board of Trustees voted to place then-Chancellor Diane Van Hook on administrative leave. Shortly after being placed on administrative leave, Chancellor Van Hook announced her retirement almost after 40 years of being COC president. With a vacancy at the college's top position, tonight we take a look at who has taken over as interim president and what his goals are, are for just the college and the community as well. As leadership changes at College of the Canyons, interim superintendent president David Andrus has a big vision for the college. So, you know, my goal, and I think the goal of my colleagues here, is to make sure that the college is forward thinking. Many students don't know of David Andrus, who has an extensive background here at College of the Canyons in various roles. I did start teaching uh, as an adjunct and then became full-time um, about 19 years ago um, and quickly became department chair of the, the, the chair of the Department of Political Science here at College of the Canyon. And um, I've enjoyed my career immensely. I um, also served on the Academic Senate here, which represents uh, faculty interest in educational standards. President Andrus notes that he was also once a college student as well being that his main mission is to serve not only the community, but current and future students as well. 
we're here to teach students, but if we're keeping our eyes and ears open, we're also learning from students that are typically and statistically younger than us and so that we can understand what drives them, what motivates them, um, and then we also partner with industry um, so that we can have a sense of where the college needs to go long term. Regarding the future of College of the Canyons, President Andrus wants students and the connections that the college has with the community to thrive for years to come. We need to be collaborate, collaborating with um, our community uh, partners to make sure that what goes on here at campus makes sense to the needs of the community in all the different sectors. Before President Andrus rose to the position of interim president, he also worked for the city of Pasadena for several years. Along with getting his law degree, he also worked as an election observer in Kosovo and Belarus as well. Reporting live for Canyons News, I'm Andrew Fabella. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Andrew. In a noisy political landscape, a local candidate seeking election shares what keeps him in harmony with his values. Canyons News reporter Terry Mitchell Collier has more. Santa Clarita businessman Jerry Danielson is running for board re-election at College of the Canyons but being a politician is not his only passion. Woodwind solo. Here I started eighth grade at Arroyo Seco and I was already listening to music and I had an older brother who was like turning me on to music. And so I asked my parents for a guitar. His musical journey ignited at Heart High, College of the Canyons, and the California Institute of the Arts, immediately making him one of LA County's most sought after award-winning composer producers. Danielson became an educator due to his extensive music knowledge. I used to teach music lessons a lot. I taught many instruments. One E and a two E and a three E. And so I relate to education and what it's like to actually put yourself into education. One of the many thriving job markets is in the arts. If you live in Santa Clarita and you want to go to a college that offers music or theater or dance or art, College of the Canyon is much more affordable and there are an amazing instructors and they have a state-of-the-art recording studio. Taking the arts can enhance your life in many ways, but it can actually lead to tangible employment. With students in mind, campaigning is a labor of love. Talking to people, getting the word out, trying to make people aware of this race. Danielson aims to keep the college's future in tune and in tempo. For Canyons News, this is Terry Mitchell Collier. Monday marked one year since Israel was attacked by Hamas militants in support of Palestine. The conflict has resulted in a high death toll for both Israelis and Palestinians. UCLA students joined widespread mourning across the Middle East with many advocating for peace and justice. <laughs> The students representing both sides of the equation have made their voices heard in the ongoing struggle for a resolution. Nearly 300 students marched on the campus in Westwood Monday evening. Those in support of Palestine and Lebanon made signs and banners calling for an end to the war. Across campus, Jewish students called for peace and remembrance for those who lost their lives last year. I almost have tears, I must say. This is, uh, this is a very emotional day for us. My mom was uh, living in uh, Kibbutz, which is a town on the Gaza border on that day on October 7th. And she was saved by a miracle. She had terrorists in her home who couldn't open the shelter. Pro-Palestinian demonstrators have said they plan to take additional action through the next few days in what they're calling a week of rage. All of this comes five months after violence took hold on the UCLA campus. The two opposing sides fought in May over an encampment made to keep Jewish students from attending classes. Following the past two weeks of impact from Hurricane Helene, Florida's hurricane season continues with another one raging its way over. Following the impact of Hurricane Helene, Hurricane Milton, a Category 5 hurricane, is currently making its way through Florida from its west coast. The hurricane made landfall today, hitting Tampa Bay at 5 p.m. Eastern Time, and continue to move through Florida over the next couple of days. Floridian governmental officials have begun to urge the citizens to evacuate the area. 
If you are in a mobile or a manufactured home or in a low-lying flood-prone area, it is never safe to stay in that situation. No matter what year it was built, you need to evacuate. Please remember evacuating doesn't mean driving hundreds of miles, it means just driving tens of miles to the closest friend, family, or shelter nearest you. It's been an active wildfire season with staggering losses and minimal wind. Firefighters are warning local residents to be prepared for what could be a record-breaking fall season. As the summer season draws to a close, a danger visible to the naked eye persists. The risk of deadly wildfires is increasing. It's a huge threat, but it's going to become even a greater threat uh, when the Santa Ana winds come in October. It's those powerful wind phenomenons that have fanned some of Santa Clarita's most destructive wildfires. Like the Saddle Ridge and Tick fires in 2019 and the powerful Lake Fire in 2020. Los Angeles, Orange, and San Bernardino counties have all seen an upswing in fast-moving brush fires, all with weaker winds. That's compared to what's expected over the next few months. Adding more fuel to the flame, a productive rainy season supercharged by a tropical storm. The rain produced large fields of green vegetation throughout the area, and this year we saw areas that received nearly 200% more rain than usual. And all of this new fuel means an entirely different landscape for firefighters. That rain breathed new life into drought parched hillsides, but now a prolonged dryness is turning what was once lush into a ticking time bomb. As California nears 1 million acres burned this year, firefighters are throwing everything they have at a problem persisting in the nation's most populous state. They've leased water bombing aircraft from Canada, announcing their arrival at a press conference in Van Nuys. We're super excited to celebrate that today. That's what this press conference is all about. It's a season so busy that firefighters couldn't even finish their press conference. As uh, nature has it, we do have an actual call. So for the media, hold on to your gear. These guys are going to take off, so we're going to pause right here. Only a few minutes into their plea to the public, firefighters grabbed their bags and marched on. But their message was not lost. As Southern California says goodbye to swimming pools and hello to pumpkin spice lattes, firefighters are warning residents to be vigilant. They say it's likely the worst has yet to come. Okay, we're going to get back, we're going to get back. Reporting from the Santa Clarita Valley, I'm Austin Dave. A relative newcomer to the firefighting toolbox is making a splash across Southern California. Reporter Lauren Hanna shows us as California's lush landscape dries up, so is funding for an important tool. Firefighters tackling flames this fire season can look to the skies for assistance. Three massive helicopters have traded army tanks for water. They used to fly for the U.S. Army. Now they're fighting a different war. Together they form the Quick Reaction Force. It's a 24-7 task force designed to battle wildfires both day and night. These helitankers on the QRF do an outstanding job of putting down fire retardant at night with the help of that S-76 intelligence platform that's flying above them. That eye in the sky is one of four helicopters funded by Southern California Edison, each tasked with making the difference between life and death. Each of these helicopters are capable of dropping 3,000 gallons of water or retardant day or night by themselves. When all three combine, they continually drop 3,000 gallons by 3,000 gallons by 3,000 gallons, followed in unison, creating a true synergy in our firefighting effort. They're successful on the fire lines, transporting more than 1 million gallons of water in the past seven months. But that could all come to an end if officials don't put out a different fire, a cash flow problem. While we're really grateful for SoCal Edison's leadership for the investment that SoCal Edison has had, we also recognize that in the interest of the public, we do need to transition some of that investment and supplement that investment with resources from the, the county and state level. The QRF has cost the power company more than $100 million, but fire officials say the tool is critical to saving lives and property. 
I think the program now has proven itself enough that where both state and local government sh could be and perhaps should be considering how to offset those costs uh, that, that Southern California Edison has been encumbered for the last you know, four years. Reporting in Santa Clarita, I'm Lauren Hanna. Coming up next on Canyons News, we get our questions answered about the future of the Saugus swap meet. And we take a look at how the community is rallying to support a high school coach battling cancer. Canyons News reporter Landon Artero has more after the break. Stay tuned. College of the Canyons creates possibilities. It's a gateway to opportunities. A place where students learn they can believe in themselves. Behind every possibility at College of the Canyons are the people. Together we focus on achieving success, one student at a time. That focus is a reflection of what we value. It defines who we are. We are. We are. We are College of the Canyons. Welcome back to Canyons News. I'm Landon Artero. The famous Saugus swap meet will officially be closing after months of speculation. Property owner Doug Bonelli announced the final date as October 27th. Bonelli has been adamant on selling the property regardless of the housing plan approval. The final market is expected to be held on the same day where vendors and visitors are invited to wear costumes and that face painting will be available. As part of Santa Clarita's 2025 strategic plan, the city is aiming for bigger and better parks for their residents. Let's, make a, let's take a look at what's new around SEV's most popular parks. The city of Santa Clarita recently installed a new staircase to Central Park just last October. With 172 steps and scenic views, residents have enjoyed using them as a great source of exercise. I like it, I think it's a good form of exercise. Um, aerobic exercise makes you stronger, so it's, it's nice, I like it. Now, city officials have announced the start of construction for a permanent artwork piece and public amenity that is set to take place along the steps and within the plaza known as River of Lights. We'll be installing hundreds of LED lights which will be completely immersive in the ground of the plaza which will then ascend into the exercise staircase um, and alongside the staircase so that when it gets dark um, all of the lights will be illuminated and almost give a, an idea of moving water which is the River of Lights. We've also decided to do a permanent public art piece, which will be the centerpiece of the plaza. River of Lights is expected to be installed by the end of the year. And with the staircase creating such a hit within the community, the city has announced plans to add another within the expansion of the David March Park in Saugus. At any time of day, you will see those stairs are being used and are one of our most uh, favored and, and popular uh, activities. And uh, to be able to add a second set of stairs uh, will be a great addition. Officials say for more recreational updates, visit santaclarita.gov slash CIP. For Canyons News, I'm Meg Hall. It is the beginning of a new era for the old Orchard Park, as it, is, as it will be renovating for the first time after almost 50 years ago. Canyons News reporter Lisandra Vera has a story. I'm Mayor Cameron Smythe, and I am very excited to be here and to welcome everybody to the groundbreaking ceremony for the old Orchard Park enhancements. Uh, yes, absolutely. Major upgrades are planned for Santa Clara's Old Orchard Park to update its facilities, along with being announced through a groundbreaking ceremony. Originally developed in 1968, the park has been a central gathering place for decades, creating generational memories. 
I'm actually an alumni of Hart High School back in the day and we used to come to this park after school and all the people would hang out there, the high school kids and I imagine that still goes on and it's remained basically the same this whole time. A new multi-sport court for different recreational activities, a pickleball court overlay on the current basketball court, ADA compliant restroom facilities, and new playground equipment with shade structures are among the plan additions. As we all know, the family um, is the heart of our community, and so amenities like this will absolutely help keep them healthy and whole. In addition to promoting increased accessibility and recreational opportunities, these improvements are intended to meet the community's changing needs. This is a safe area, especially with us living across the street, but I think the renovation will be a huge like uplift to the whole neighborhood. And other young park goers may say, it might be fun or cool. Be ready to grab your picnic basket as the past meets a new life. The park is expected to be completed by summer 2025. I'm Lisa Vera for Canyons News. Every year, an estimated 1.9 million Americans will be diagnosed with cancer. But it's one person who is especially on the minds of many in Saugus. Natalie Merchant joins us live to tell us more. Thanks, Landon. High school athletes often only think about winning, but one team here in Santa Clarita has their focus on something much bigger. The Saugus High School football team has stepped up for someone who has been an important part of their journey both on and off the field. In the face of hardship, they're showing what it truly means to be a team. One high school football community has come together in a powerful show of support for one of their own. The assistant coach of Saugus High School, Scott Maxwell, is in the fight of his life after being diagnosed with lymphoma earlier this year. Despite the challenges, the community is rallying behind him. You know, he's never far from our hearts and minds. I mean, we're constantly thinking about him and, you know, bringing him up and reminding our guys about the struggle that he's going through and just that we're, we're here to support him. For the past six weeks, he's been confined to a hospital bed, battling not just the cancer, but the effects of the treatment, including paralysis in his lower body. Maxwell has been a part of the Centurion's coaching staff for four years. Since his diagnosis, the community has come together to raise over $20,000 on a GoFundMe page in support of Maxwell and his wife. Their strength during this difficult time has become a symbol of hope, reminding everyone that no battle is fought alone when a community stands together. Well, one thing that he's taught us is focus on the details, and I, I see that in our relationships with people on and off the field, that if we focus on making the most of our moment, then we'll, we'll have happiness in our life. The Centurion players are learning a valuable lesson both on and off the field. They know the challenges Maxwell is facing are far greater than any score. A tough journey ahead for Coach Maxwell, but with the unwavering support of his team and the community, he's not fighting alone. Coach Maxwell's story inspires the Saugus community, highlighting the strength of kindness and the power of support. The players believe it's not about football, but supporting those you care for. Natalie Merchant for Kansas News, now back to the news desk. Thanks, Natalie. While the location might have changed, the goal for the Dixon Family Health Center's Duck Dash has stayed the same. The local fundraiser was recently held in an effort to make a difference. Xander Grable brings us more. In the triple-digit heat of Santa Clarita, the Samuel Dixon Family Health Center held its 21st annual Duck Dash last weekend. Thousands upon thousands of rubber ducks got their flippers ready to compete for first place through a series of waves. This is our signature event, and this is our major event for fundraising that we do to cover a lot of the costs that um, from patients that you know are uninsured or underinsured. So this is a major fundraiser, our Duck Dash, and we've been doing that for quite a while. However, the Duck Dash wasn't always on such a large scale. Philip Solomon, who has been working for 10 years as the CEO of the health center, has seen how the Duck Dash has changed year by year. Uh, the history started you know, 21 years ago in someone's backyard. A uh, board member and some community members got together knowing that this agency needed to have a fundraiser to help offset the cost for individuals and families who can't afford health care services. So it started out in someone's backyard. From backyards to aquatic centers, the Duck Dash has been able to raise funds and help those in need by taking financial stress off of families when health issues do arise. So today's fundraising event, um, all the proceeds help offset 
set the cost at what it, what it would cost someone to get the health care services that they need. So we want to be able to be that um, organization, that safety net for them so that they can get the care they need at either very little or to no cost to them. For Canyons News, I'm Xander Grable. October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. SEV has its very own event about this difficult issue. Canyons News reporter Emily Vermontes has more. Support was heartfelt this past Saturday at the Child and Family Center. The community came together to raise awareness and money for domestic violence survivors and the life-changing services provided by the center. Participants walked a 5K filled with inspirational quotes and statistics. This event showcases the importance of community and alliance in addressing vital social issues. It's such a community event. You'll see that we have a lot of our community partners here supporting us. We have Subaru, whose uh, car is behind me. They sponsored this event. But it really, it's to help empower and um, provide those resources to those that are experiencing domestic violence, whether they're in the midst of it or they're a survivor of it. Hello Subaru has been sponsoring this event for the past two years as this company recognizes the significance of raising awareness around this important issue. Domestic violence is everywhere and it shouldn't be anywhere at all. Um, and so our company finds it very important to support all those in need, whether no matter what their issue is or whatever they're facing in their lives. This event is significant to faculty and staff of the Child and Family Center, especially since many people may not fully understand the complexities surrounding this topic. A lot of people are really scared to talk about it or they feel alone or uncomfortable. And events like this bring awareness and you know there are a lot of things that people simply don't know. For example, not many people know, I didn't even know at the outset, that pets are a that they are like the numbers of pets that become victims of domestic violence is actually massive. They're used as bargaining chips, they're often abused, and that's really just the tipping point. Some survivors may feel alone when confronting these challenges, making it essential that survivors understand that there are people for support. Events like this raise awareness and let them know that there, there is a safe space, there's a community around to help. For Canyons News, I'm Emily Veramontes. For 11 years, COC has held an event in the Honor Grove for the students that commit suicide each year nationally. Reporter Christopher Casey shines a light on the event. You see before you an endless sea of empty chairs. They represent the 1,100 college students that, according to the COC Health and Wellness Center, commit suicide nationally each school year. For over 11 years, the Wellness Center has done this event in the Honor Grove to shine a light on the issue of suicide prevention. And it's important to bring this event to our college so that our college students know that we are here to help and we provide resources to them. And we also invite community health providers to come and provide resources to our students. The Health and Wellness Center provides a 24-hour hotline for students seeking counseling and offering up to six free sessions. Additionally, it hosts the Active Mind Support Group, which helps inform people more about mental health and what you can do to help. Uh, if so the person is here on campus and, and needs help, um, it's maybe uh, unsure of who to speak with. I, I know that there are school counselors on site that they can speak with, clinicians that um, can assess further, you know, uh, in terms of what level of support that student is in need of. And um, obviously, if it's an emergency, calling 911. If you're in a crisis or need help, you can contact the numbers on screen to do so. Reporting for Canyons News, I'm Christopher Casey. Most people think of COC as a place to learn math or English before transferring to a four-year college. But what if we told you about a program here on campus that may help you draw your own future? Vic Suarez has a story. Order up! I don't want to play anymore. Me neither. Working sucks. That was a short clip from the upcoming animated series, Spenders, a collaborated animation project created by Bella and Nori with the help of Connor Ananos, both majoring in animation production here at Mentry Hall in COC. The two artists use key elements taken from their classes and teachers to incorporate in their own projects. But what exactly have they learned during their time here at COC? So we have um, two degrees in animation. Um, we have a degree we call animation production, which is geared um, mainly towards drawing. 
Not only are there many fun classes that teach the important fundamentals of animation, but there is an inclusive environment for many of the students and teachers here on the second floor. As you can see, there are many postings of artwork from current and past students all over the halls, including an art gallery showcasing Disney animation downstairs on the first floor. I've met so many like fantastic people, so many fantastic professors that I've learned so much from. As soon as I stepped uh, into classes and started doing live drawing specifically, but like all my other classes and talking with my professors and getting feedback, stuff like that, I've just grown so much as an artist. Bella and Connor both shared with me their own interpretation of what characters might look like using shapes as a model in their character design class. Told to, um, instructed to make designs of one same animal three different times um, in the three different languages, circle, square, and triangle. Um, I picked raccoons, um, kind of to present that sort of like soft, then stable, then energetic or sneaky. COC has a pretty stable art department that has helped many students improve their work and move on to becoming professional professional artist working at big name studios in the industry. For Canyons News, I'm Victoria Suarez. October is Filipino American History Month and here in Santa Cruz Valley, locals are celebrating with the annual Filipino Cultural Festival. Canyons News reporter Julian Lina has more. It's a celebration of vibrant colors, rhythmic beats, and deep-rooted traditions. At the Newhall Community Center, the Film Cultural Festival, organized by the Filipino American Association of SCV, brought together families and friends to honor and explore rich Filipino heritage. From traditional folk dances to booths showcasing Filipino-inspired creations, the festival offered unique opportunities for attendees to experience the culture up close. For many Filipino Americans, this event was more than just a celebration. It served as a way to connect with their roots and share their identity with others. Everywhere in the world, there's a lot of Filipinos. So we take pride of our culture, and that's why we do this every year. And hoping that the you know, young adults like you continuously support us. The festival was a colorful celebration of Filipino history, but it was also a reminder of the Filiam Association's ongoing commitment of making meaningful impacts here in the Santa Clarita Valley and across the ocean. We do have this scholarship also that, we, that goes to the Philippines to help a college student in the Philippines and we support them from the start till they graduate. So that's one thing this association is good at. We want to improve people's lives by promoting them and their living standard, their education. For Canyons News, I'm Julianne Lena. That does it for this edition of Canyons News. I'm Landon Artero. Remember, you can catch us on the web at canyonsnews.com. You can share news tips and stories ideas with the Canyon News team by visiting our social media pages. Subscribe to our YouTube, Facebook, X, and Instagram. Have a good night, everybody.